There are significant risks as we look at the problems we face with regard to food security, especially going forward. Some of the most complicated and some of the most extraordinary challenges that the world has faced in all of its history. Food Chain Reaction is an effort to put some of the major actors on this planet who have to deal with a global food crisis. Food Chain Reaction was really to create these scenarios based on scenarios that have happened in the past, but how do countries respond to them? We had eight teams. We had four rounds spanning from 2020 to 2030. Our real hope was that we would get really great participants in the room, which we did, players from all around the world to elevate a more global conversation among all of those different worldwide experts. The game itself created an opportunity to live into the future. It caused people to think through what the possibilities are. And in that process, I think they realized what they have to start to do today to prepare for that future. We began the decade in 2020. Food prices in 2020 and 2021 are climbing. The world in 2020 is a world with increasing pressures from urbanization. It's a world where it's getting hotter and it's getting drier. We're also seeing increased social unrest because of the volatility in the food system. All of those factors coming together, creating that perfect storm. Food security is an issue that affects all of us. If you eat, then you're a stakeholder and how people feed the world. The challenges and crises that we were assigned are exactly what we expect to see in the future. So you've got famine, you've got increased pests, you've got the role of climate change in the world. As we face food shortages, it can cause major political unrest. We need to be prepared to address these challenges. There'll be huge pressure to focus more domestically, but I think collectively as the United States, if we diminish our support for overseas activities, that will be a tremendous signal to the rest of the world to similarly reduce their contributions. We could send someone over to the Africa room and try to negotiate some at least soft targets on climate smart agriculture. Africa is the future breadbasket of the world. It has the potential, but it hasn't fulfilled that potential. We would like to discuss opportunities to promote private sector investments. And we would like your support in identifying how we can leverage private investments into the sector to grow it. In the first round, we saw the players in a goal-setting mode, and they weren't necessarily being really active in their implementation of some of the things that they thought might be able to address a food insecure world. The problem is getting worse. The actions are remaining static. That's as bad as you can get. The world doesn't change just by saying good ideas. You have to move forward and actually do things, not just talk about them. Things turn worse in 2023. Stress continues to mount in the global food system. Round two was where we really put the heat on players. That's when we really saw them get action-oriented. Food prices are going up 400%. We've got a flood of migrants coming in. The world is starting to fall apart. In the short term, we give countries in sub-Saharan Africa a large gift of fertilizer. Nitrogen fertilizers will yeah, severely right. affect the soil quality in the long term. Will we rather avoid new wars or large-scale starvation to save three years or four years of ecosystem services? There are no good choices in a situation they put us at. Everything we do is going to have some negative effect. A lot of teams started during the first round looking at their own countries. But the situation got so dire that they were forced into bilateral and even trilateral negotiations and meetings. We created a new global coalition on agricultural technology. We got every party who joined it to agree to double their research and development budget. And we were able to get all the other major parties to agree to a price on carbon and then to immediately start moving towards trading. As the momentum's build up, there's more of a sense of countries stepping up to support other countries. If that could be the new normal, it would really be a game changer. Scientists report that 2028 and 2029 are two of the hottest years on record, and they serve as reminders of the degrading impact of higher temperatures on food production. The game designers threw a very difficult scenario at us in the last round with multiple crashes and disturbances all over the world. We organized an impromptu global summit trying to deal with those kinds of crises, recognizing that they were only going to get worse. The point of this meeting is to discuss whether or not we can come up with a response to the growing frequency of climate-driven crises around the world. 
we are going to have a pretty hard world to live in. So I propose an organization for response to disaster and emergency relief. There might be the possibility of the formation of peacekeeping-like forces. The United Nations could articulate some common standards for things such as logistics planning, for communications, so that when these forces come together in crises, the ability to interoperate has already been predetermined. The final consequence of the game was to bring together all the countries and all the multilateral institutions and really establish a new environment of global governance. The world needs stronger cooperation to meet the challenges that the future will throw at it. Over the last couple days, we've learned that alone we can't do it. But together, we have all the confidence that this is a problem that we can solve. International cooperation on these kinds of issues is much more possible than people might think. There is a wide diversity of opinions in all countries. And therefore, there are always like-minded people with whom you can start the conversation. I have learned how difficult it is to really think out of the box, to imagine something really new. It is so easy to fall back to the old recipes, to be innovative. It wasn't that easy as I saw. I think I've learned about institutional inertia. How much of a crisis do we need to unlock some of that inertia so that people say, that's not going to work anymore. We have to try something radically different. The new normal is volatility. The end of the game indicated a world with greater swings that are closer together, that require attention on a more regular basis. The world at the end of this game looks pretty dire, but now we can look backwards from 2030 to today, and we can look at that 15-year time span that lies ahead of us and figure out strategies of getting an early start in addressing these issues. The world can get it right. The simulation showed us that we really need to get ahead of the curve. Keep working on these ideas and expanding them. Talk about this exercise and the lessons you learned from it. I hope this is the beginning of a great global food security network focused on solving the most important security challenge in the years ahead.